This video is HF Mobile, grounding in RFI. Warning, we're talking about electricity. Use proper precaution. Your average vehicle. First of all, there is no average vehicle. In fact, between two otherwise identical vehicles, there can be great differences in the amount, the type, and severity of RFI. For example, the egressed ignition RFI may be S9 on one and S2 on the other. Even minor annoyances like the fuel pump and AC fan hash vary greatly from model to model. They are, after all, screwed together. The same thing can be said about ingresses, especially sound systems. Secondly, the suggestion that one specific model or brand is superior to another doesn't take the aforementioned facts into account. This begs the question, is one generally better than the other? Well, maybe, but we have to be more specific. In this case, we're speaking about ground planes and to a lesser degree, RFI issues. With that in mind, we can make a few general statements. As a rule, unibody vehicles exhibit less problems, both in ingress and egress RFI. This is due mainly to the all welded body construction. However, most still have sound isolation undercarriages from the suspension, engine, transaxle, and exhaust system, etc. And these need to be bonded to maximize RF connectivity. Body-on-body -body vehicles tend to be more bolted on pieces, and this is especially true of pickups. No matter where you mount your antenna on a pickup, the bed should be bonded to the chassis on all four corners, and the cab on both sides. If you don't, you'll most likely be plagued by RF problems, some of which you won't know you even have. One major point to remember, DC connectivity is not the same as RF connectivity. When you improperly bond or wire your insulation, it's possible to create a ground loop with the vehicle's superstructure. When you create a ground loop, the resulting effect will often appear to be RFI. This is the reason ground loops are the toughest problems to find incorrect. Thus, under no circumstances should the body and or frame be used as a path for DC ground return. Doing so on a modern vehicle is a prescription for RFI and operational problems with various onboard electronics. Returns should always be run directly to the battery or jump point as the case dictates. And if all else fails, talk to a mobile electronics certified professional or an ASE certified mechanic about your ham radio installation.